Hi, I'm Suit and Tie Guy, and this is uh, STG Sound Labs, or STG Content Labs, as we are calling it tonight. And we're 20 minutes into the future in a way we've never been before. Uh, I'm about to show you uh, a new module that we've got called the Slicer, or the Wave Slicer, or the .l .slc. And uh, it allows you to switch back and forth between two different input waveforms, does some other cool stuff. Uh, it uh, is designed for wave replacement synthesis, which uh, John Sonnenberg's uh, Nobcon 2018 talk was all about, which you can check on the Nobcon YouTube channel. Um, but, uh, so I'm gonna go over to this uh, modular synthesizer here. Oh, whoa, ah, that looks different. All right, so um, right now, uh, like if we could take the oscilloscope, Okay. Oh, picture in picture. Wow, that's that's very sophisticated. Um, yeah. So uh, what we what we've got here is uh, the 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 yellow waveform. If you could bring that up full screen. All right. Okay. The yellow waveform is a sawtooth wave. It represents the input signal going into the slicer, and the blue waveform is the output of output one of the slicer. The slicer actually has two outputs. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, and so basically like um, the whole, the, the slicer is based on a, a comparator, like a pulse converter, right? That is then controlling a very high speed switch. So right now all you're seeing is input one. Okay, and I'm gonna like slice over to input two using the front panel control. Okay, input two, that is a sine wave. Okay, input one is a triangle wave. Now, let's just unplug these inputs first so I can demonstrate that even if you're not using the waveform inputs of the slicer, it does something. So with the knob all the way down, you just get zero, uh, negative five volts and then Oh, oh, we have a pulse wave. Okay, so basically you can use this thing as a pulse converter if you want. That's one of the neat things about it. Um, and I am gonna take the... I'm gonna go back and plug the... Uh, if you could take the... Take modular. Thanks. I'm gonna plug the triangle wave into... Um, input one, or input A as it's called, and I take the sine wave and plug it into input two. Okay, now uh, take a oscilloscope. Thanks, okay. So let's hear what this sounds like. We're gonna put this, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna put this envelope generator in looping mode. Okay, so you're just hearing a triangle wave right now. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually slice over to the sine wave. Okay, now you just have a sine wave, right? Okay. Well, that really probably doesn't excite you too much. But now watch this. I'm gonna I have the sine wave running through an STG Sound Labs mixer, which allows us to uh, introduce a voltage offset. So I'm just gonna offset this sine wave a little bit. Watch this. Oh, that's kind of neat, right? Now, when we sweep that around, you get a really interesting sort of timbre modulation. Um, in fact, we can automate that timbre modulation. I'm gonna bring in uh, I've got an envelope generator in looping mode, which is gonna sweep through the whole thing. Like that, okay? Now I'm gonna play around with the voltage offset on the, on the sine wave. I'll bet you never thought a triangle on a sine wave could sound like that, hmm?
bring that sine wave back in. Like that. And bias the sine wave up. And back down. And it does provide a nice, even with the two normal waveforms, without the offset, you get a nice subtle shimmering sort of effect with it. So now I'm actually going to change the output that is feeding input B from the sine wave to a wave folder. And I'm going to also bring this modulation out, and we're going to switch entirely uh, back to the triangle for a second. and. Um, now we're going to bring the wave folder in. Okay, so this is the wave folder, and I'm going to bring, I'm going to, I'm going to gain it more so we can hear what the wave folder does. See, that sounds kind of neat. Okay, now. So that's the input feeding the wave folder. That's the triangle wave. The output of the wave folder then looks like this. And so I'll bring the fold mix in a little bit, like that. And then move back to the triangle wave, and I'm going to bring that modulation back in on the, on the slice input. play around with the settings in the wave folder a little bit. Right now I'm adjusting the offset of the wave folder. I'm also changing the modulation rate. Fold mix back down. And so we can see right here the uh, triangle wave is turning into the famous potato chip wave that the wave folder is known for. All right, so that's the first output, but the second output, it's going to be is a little different. The second output switches between the two inputs. Now, there we go. So it's like that, okay? Uh, it would look better if I was triggering this off of a sub-octave of the oscillator, but um, we're going to have to, we'll do with this for now. So let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so... So this is one cycle of triangle with one cycle of the wave folder. Now the neat thing about modulation and changing the slice point in this mode is that it actually shifts the phase of things. So we're going to bring the modulation back in. You're still getting one cycle of each, but it's, it's shifting the phase of what part of uh, the cycle you're actually getting.
take camera one. Oh, sorry, take camera four, I guess. Yes, okay, thanks. So uh, yeah, basically that's the slicer. Um, I'm just showing it in audio. You can also use this for control voltage, but that'll be a different video. I really just wanted to get this out before, uh, huh? Oh, yeah. Also, it has video applications, which we'll cover in another video. Um, but uh, I just wanted to get through the audio stuff for now. So uh, thank you very much.